So to get started, uh, my name is uh, Samuel McAllister. I'm based in Autodesk Australia Sydney office and I'm a senior technical sales specialist for the architectural engineering and construction industries. The uh, agenda for today, uh, we're going to start looking at just some basic uh, business issues, why we've started to um, implement these type of cloud technologies uh, for going beyond just, just single firms to um, enterprise firms to firms located around the world, trying to address some of those issues that firms have with collaboration. Uh, I'll be touching on our A360 team application, and this is the one that's available now. Um, and I'll, I'll try and do a bit of a live demo on some of these products. Um, if there's a bit of a lag at your end, um, you'll still be able to uh, get access to the recording and you'll be able to see it without the lag. It's just when we're trying to run uh, webinars with live cloud stuff, the, it blocks up the pipes a little bit, but we will we'll try and attempt um, some A360 team live demos and also A360 collaboration for Revit. Um, just to be clear here, um, Currently, a lot of users have A360 Drive as part of their um, uh, building design suites enablements. Um, Team is a separate application, which you can currently purchase here um, in Australia for a small amount. A360 Collaboration for Revit isn't available uh, in this region yet. Um, it has been rolled out in North America, and um, we're fine-tuning it before we roll it out for the rest of the world. Uh, in terms of release dates, we uh, tentatively, tentatively will release it in January next year. Um, we'll be able to confirm that um, at the beginning of our, our Q1 next year once this is released. So um, just as a follow-up, um, this is more of a, an overview, and then uh, in the new year, um, please contact your um, local Auditor sales rep to discuss how you can get access to this, this tool in the new year. Okay, um, also based on um, our US teams who have run these webinars before, there's been a number of uh, common questions. So uh, what we're going to do is just go through some of those common questions, uh, some of them on security, some of them on, on why we should uh, have this even if we're just a one-off firm not collaborating. collaborating. Uh, we'll be able to answer um, some of the, go over some of those questions that have been asked before by our customers. And then finally, um, uh, some websites that we have um, in Autodesk that you can look at for resources like how do you get started, where you go to troubleshoot. Um, there's a lot of uh, good data out there to help you um, be informed about what A360 Collaboration for Revit does. Okay, so the first uh, part of our agenda, we're going to look at the, uh, the business issues. So this is looking at um, what factors are driving the need for improved BIM collaboration. So um, Revit's now been around for about 18 years. We um, acquired it from Charles Revit Technologies, um, released under the Autodesk uh, name as Revit Architect to begin with. Then we brought in Structure and MEP. Then over the last four or five years, um, since my time at Autodesk, we've been adding a lot more uh, functionality to the product in terms of um, uh, construction workflows and uh, other tools that connect with other products. So there's a lot more interoperability going on with uh, more extended applications in the suites and the cloud. And what you see here on the right-hand side of the screen is a, a sample of a project done by Great Ocean Group in China of um, the amount of collaborators and consultants who work on this project. Kind of similar to the Autodesk wheel that you see in a number of our presentations. This is uh, by no means a similar sort of uh, diagram. So we've got like the engineers and the architects, like today Oanda, the Japanese architects, starting off at the early stages of the project, building up the architecture model, then more and more collaborators and consultants are coming in to uh, work up more detail into that model and it's going right through to uh, practical completion, building sign-off, handing over a model and then that model being used for um, facilities maintenance and management. So there's a lot going on uh, with the full building information modeling workflow and so these projects are really complex and there's a lot of data moving around. Um, when we're moving that data around, um, there's been inefficient uh, model sharing, um, you've had to set up a lot of different types of IT infrastructures to manage that model. 
So what we have here on the right uh, is an example of all these different firms trying to collaborate. So a civil engineer providing survey data, um, working with your mechanical guys, your construction people. Um, all of this data is shared in different ways, whether it's an FTP site or you try and email it or you put it on a Dropbox account. Um, it can be a very messy way to try and track all that information. Uh, ideally, you want it in one location. And then um, there's dis, uh, disconnected communication. So um, there's, there's emails and Excel spreadsheets and site markups and all this information that, that's going between all these different people and all these different locations. So trying to track all that information uh, is very difficult uh, to do. And uh, what we're trying to do with the 360 products is put this all within one hub. So all this information, all this complexity um, can be managed in one single source location. So this is the A360 team application, and as I mentioned before, um, there's a lot of 360 products out there. So A360 Drive is the one you already have. Um, that's the one on subscription that gives you 25 gigabytes of storage. A360 Team is our new application. So it's a separate purchase. It's very, uh, very small amount, but it gives you um, the basis to move from A360 Team into Revit Collaboration. So uh, if you think about uh, just going back to kind of a similar wheel diagram where we work through the process of designing our building, we've got the early conceptual designs, the renderings, the designers uh, working in CAD and building information modeling tools. There's um, collaboration done in person or via markups, via meetings. The data goes through several different people um, until it gets fabricated and then it gets built and then we move into uh, what the vendors are going to do with uh, maintaining that facility. So there's occupants, um, there's, there's new tools coming out in the Autodesk um, uh, software offerings like Building Ops, which allows you to take all this BIM data and then start to uh, manage the information via a mobile device to manage, say, the heating and cooling of the building. And then uh, even further on, there's the ongoing maintenance of the building. So every 10 years, certain bits of equipment need checking, um, needs to be maintained, parts need to be replaced. Um, so all of this data, um, again, is communicated to a central hub. Uh, so what we've done uh, in this space is produce A360 team to hold all of this information, and it can be read on mobile devices uh, natively. So all of this information at the early stages can be captured um, all the different various uh, file formats can be read and uh, all the information for the communication here on the left uh, can be recorded. Um, so beyond uh, just Autodesk software, what we're aiming to do here is um, provide uh, the option to read about 100 different file formats. So uh, natively at the moment, you can read your AutoCAD Civil 3D, Navisworks, Revit, AutoCADs, uh, and other uh, AutoCAD-based, Autodesk-based pro products. But there's also um, Microsoft and Adobe applications that can be read natively on the, on the cloud platform. So it's a really powerful um, interface to actually have all the data there on a mobile device, but you can also open that information on that device and read it without having to get an add-in or go into another application. Um, so it's not just in the architecture space, it's being used um, across a number of Autodesk's uh, applications. So in our manufacturing department, they're heavily using uh, this type of tool to share data when they're making a product. It's a, a central workspace. It reads uh, currently uh, numerous file formats that are coming in from other applications, other uh, modeling type applications that we're showing here on the screen. And then there's even a, a deep dive search in the application. So if you've got certain parameters embedded in your, in your model and you want to find them, um, you can actually search through A360, A360 team and find those components and look at their properties. So uh, I'm going to uh, run a bit of a live demo. If there is a bit of bandwidth lag, um, I do apologize. It's just uh, we're trying to push uh, two types of graphics programs through web at the same time. Um, so let me just go to my uh, interface here and I'm going to be watching uh, the second screen we have um, just to see the lag. Okay, so um, when you go to um, A360 team, you're going to see this uh, splash screen. Uh, you can actually get a, um, a free account here. This is for 
um, a, a trial. Um, what we do is we we sign in um, and it will take you to um, the splash screen, the typical default splash screen to do your username and login. Um, I'm actually already logged in, so by default um, it should take me straight to um, my A360 team interface. And what you're seeing on the on the screen here are numerous projects that I'm uh, involved in um, in this uh, particular hub. Over here on the right um, is my avatar. It's a little bit different to my uh, previous uh, screenshot they had at the beginning on the title slide. Um, if I click on that, there's a number of different hubs which I'm involved with. So if you're working on a project and you're working on somebody else's hub, let's say you're working with a structural engineer's hub, you can um, click on your uh, avatar there and then see which ones you're, you're interested in. So uh, there's even, this is the newer version, you can go back to a previous version. We keep on updating this on a regular basis to give you more, more features. Uh, and then also here on the right, there's a number of um, activity tracking devices here. So I can see when people have uploaded models, who's accessed my PowerPoints, etc. Um, what I want to do though, I'm just going to go to my, my other screen here. Uh, it looks like the lag's not too bad today. And uh, I just wanted to show this, this admin project that I'm working on for um, Revit Collaboration. So what I've done inside of Revit is I've uploaded uh, some models. These models are Revit models sitting on the cloud. Um, they are linked together uh, via the cloud. And I just want to show you how you can open up one of these models. Um, it doesn't have to be on a web browser interface. Uh, when I go and see clients, I open these models up on my phone. Um, it's really easy to do. You just um, push the models to the cloud. Um, over here on the right, you've got tools to uh, just hover over that to uh, share that information directly with someone. So I could just put in an email. Um, there's a couple of tools here for privacy settings. You can add a password if you want. Uh, there's also the option to download the model directly. So I'm not going to click that right now, but you can click it and you can download the information. Uh, and then there's a few other tools to move or delete it into other folders. So I'm just going to uh, fire up this uh, structure model. This is one of the more lightweight models. Um, this is actually our newer interface, so this kind of gives you a nice, clean, simple interface. Um, this one here doesn't have any sheets set up, so I'm just going to go straight to the model and uh, just show you the uh, the 3D model just for starters. So you can add comments. This is a little floating uh, comment window here on the right. Uh, I won't do that just right now. Um, I'm just going to click on the view button and uh, we're going to give it a couple of seconds just, just to transfer through. This model is about 9.9 uh, .9 megabytes, I think it was. And you can see here, even while we're running um, GoToWebinar, it's come through pretty quick. So this is just the, the interface here. Um, when you use it for the first time, if you're a Revit user, um, the controls may feel a bit backwards, um, just because it's sort of geared up a little more for the manufacturing type uh, setup. You can go here to your settings, and you can start to look at uh, navigation and selection settings. So you can go and uh, I think it was reverse the zoom button and you can uh, you know look at performance and appearance. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. But there's some really cool graphics in here um, and there's a number of tools here to customize it for your personal type of navigation. So uh, zooming in, zooming out, typical uh, tools. Uh, here you've got a, a walkthrough tool. So you can go into perspective and then with the, the walk tool, I'm just using my um, uh, arrow keys to, to navigate through the model, um, orbit tools, and I think if you hold that down on the arrow, click on the arrow, there's different types of free orbits and then central orbits here just to navigate around the model. Uh, my preference is to have a, a free orbit here. Um, pan, zoom, and then there's uh, different types of camera interactions. So you can start to you know adjust all this sort of stuff. Uh, also recently we, re, uh, we added a sectioning tool. So I click on uh, the section tool and just navigate around. Um, I can actually uh, do live sections through the model. So that's quite a nice, a nice tool. Um, there's, uh, you can do this via the um, different X, Y, and Z planes. And then there's also um, a box type session as well. So uh, you can use the uh, gizmo tools to uh, pull this up. Um, so for those of you who have used BIM 360 uh, glue, there's similar sort of tools. And there's um, one also in, uh, in showcase as well. 
So a uh, really good way just if you've got a really complex model and you just want to focus on a certain type of the project, um, you can use these tools and, uh, and, and read the information and cut it down to what you want to see. Um, so if I just get rid of that for a second and just zoom out and um, the other one is if you get lost, um, you can always just explode the model. This is kind of a, a really cool little little tool, a little bit of lag here. But uh, if you need to find all these components, um, it will go and uh, pull the whole model apart. And uh, you can select select on an item here. So if I go and select that item, it will center on that item. And so let me right click on it. Uh, I can then go and bring up the, uh, the properties here. So uh, a really easy, simple, intuitive interface where you can start to uh, navigate through your model, um, look at some of the information inside of that model, and you can use this explode tool if you ever want to find all the parts. Um, so properties, uh, settings, properties is just bringing up information on the model part you selected. Um, this is full screen, those are the settings. Um, the other bit on the settings is just performance and appearance. So you can turn off um, maybe some of these um, additional sort of uh, graphic tools here, just to make it uh, run a bit faster. So you can see here, um, that's our um, uh, anti-aliasing and all that turn stuff turned off. Okay, um, so uh, also here we've got uh, comments. So let's say um, we're working on this project and um, we share it with a fabricator and the fabricator looks at, looks at my model and goes, well look, you know, this is a bit of a mess. Um, what they can do is they can do things like they can capture an image and say, um, make, a, make a comment. Um, so they can type in, you know, this, this won't work. Um, simple as that, you can do this on an iPad, you can do that um, on the web browser on the phone. This won't work. There's also a uh, comment on an object. So maybe if you want to comment on a steel beam. Um, that will automatically uh, select that object. Um, beam uh, 2, for example. And I'm just going to move that down a little way a little bit. My screen so I can see. Post that. And what you're seeing here is it's giving us a number. Um, if I just do it again on, on a point. Um, and then just post that one. Uh, you can see here, as I go to post it, um, it's giving us numbers and you can see that identifying on the model. So whenever I go and click that in the activity uh, tool there, it will take me to those different uh, components. And I should bring that up. So I'll just do that one more time. And I want to post on a, on a comment. There we go. Um, piles, post. That should be coming through. So there we go. There we go. So what, what you're seeing here, just, just graphically on the screen, is it points to that actual object automatically. So for someone who's new to the project and they need to find those components, you can instantly just um, add these kind of bookmarks and it will um, add your comments and then you can post it and people can read this. Um, and then here you've got uh, an option to do live reviews and share the information with other users. So again, it's just copying that information, sending it to the person, um, and then they've got the option to also download that model as well. In fact, I'll just cancel that download. Okay, so that's uh, a very basic uh, version of A360 Team at the moment. Um, there's also different version controls here, so if I go and upload other models, um, it will move to V2, so every time you're uploading the model and collaborating and making comments, um, you're um, changing the version control here. Um, I'll just go back to the admin project here, I just want to fire up um, the one that I have the sheet files in as well. Um, so this is the architecture project. Um, we did actually just announced on our Autodesk Building Solutions website on the YouTube channel um, an update on the Project Alexandria, which actually works with A360 team um, with the sheets. Just if I bring up one of the sheets, so it's the same thing here, there's the model view, which I've just shown. The sheets also go up with the Revit model, so you don't need to do anything, you just send it up, the sheets are embedded uh, with that file. And we can see here, now when we bring up our sheets, we've got a few more tools uh, available here. And you can see um, it looks like it's defaulted to a sheet size, which isn't quite quite right here. Um, this might just be something that we're working out, but we can still go through this. Um, so a couple of the tools we have here are uh, measurement tools. So we can go in here and maybe we're wanting to do a measure um, of the diameter of this column. So a contractor can go in there and they can measure and it's uh, 1.33 uh, meters. 
and you can see here, this is our data X's and data Y's here. Um, you can also look at the layer manager. So even if you're not working in, um, if you're working in, a, in an AutoCAD application, you can start to um, look at the layers. Um, you can also select on the, the vectors here. So I just select on some of the objects. Um, even if I'm working in um, uh, Revit, it still starts to pick up uh, some of this information. So I'll just go to the, the properties and it's going to do it for me this one. I'll try that one. Okay, this one hasn't updated yet either. Uh, but what, what you will start to see is uh, more of these tools. So even if you're working with the sheet files from the application, you're going to have a few more tools to measure. Um, also do your markups. It doesn't have to be all in 3D. I can do a screen grab here, um, write that comment and post it. I can still do uh, the markups. So that's just going to post through. I think it's got a little bit of a lag at the moment. Um, and again, you've got different types of settings here and the properties. So I think this one is going to let me do it. I think it's just thinking for me. Oh, here we go. There's, there's the post. So again, you can still uh, work both in 2D and 3D to do the markups. Not everybody likes to work in 3D. Um, contractors or sometimes prefer plans, sections, elevations and details. They can uh, interact with this simple environment. And if you um, uh, go to the uh, mobile device, um, there's even like little revision clouds and markup pen tools as well. So really a great application for you to uh, collaborate with other stakeholders using A360 Team and people can do um, markups and see that information on their mobile devices without actually having to have a copy of the software. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to go back to the, the presentation. Um, so this is your, uh, that was your A360 uh, Team application. Um, a couple other things here is uh, when you're starting to uh, collaborate with other users here, uh, this is actually a slightly older uh, screenshot because we keep on updating it. Um, we have um, access to different projects, um, data, we can invite people, we can add a calendar for different tasks that need to be completed. Um, you can see this is a screenshot of um, some of the US guys, so they've actually added uh, Thanksgiving to their, to their calendars. Um, and then also um, you have an activity feed here. Uh, so really a simple clean interface for the A360 dashboard. Um, as I mentioned before, um, it works on uh, mobile devices. So um, a number of users can access all this data, see the activities, track it on uh, all mobile, mobile devices. So this is what you see on, a, on an iPad, for example. Um, so all the different folders, um, the screenshots or the graphics of the models. And then when you access the model and you look at the properties and select on the properties, there's these different uh, selection trees here and you can start to turn on and off information. Um, down the bottom here is a comment button. If you get lost, you can click on the home. Uh, and then this is the comments that have been created. So again, you don't have to have a web browser or a laptop. Um, users can be on the iPad selecting those objects. And then here we're making comments. Um, and there's the comment um, number here attached to that particular part of the model. So a really simple way to um, engage with the model. Um, as noted before, it's going to be reading a hundred different file formats and uh, the markup and sharing the feedback is really easy. You can just instantly email it or send them a link and they're going to see this hand markup here. Um, so you can even use the pen tool on the iPad to do the markup and then get some real-time feedback on that design. Um, the other one is A360 notifications, so it's going to be notifying your phone, so um, on the project you're working with, you don't have to even be logged in, you can uh, get these notifications from other collaborators and it will come to your mobile device and you can follow that link directly into A360 team. Okay, so uh, halfway through, this now brings us into A360 collaboration for Revit. Um, so just to be clear, it's a360 team and A360 collaboration are different products. Um, I know some users uh, in Australia here who have gone out buying the A360 uh, collaboration suite, thinking that they've got collaboration for Revit. Um, you don't. Um, it's a separate purchase, and we'll, we'll touch on uh, that at the end. Um, I only have the US pricing at the moment, but just to give you a flavor of um, how it's sort of going to be sold 
um, just to, to, to touch on that. So it's not available now, so don't go out and buy that A360 collaboration suite thinking you're gonna get collaboration forever. Okay, so the, the Revit evolution. So as I mentioned, the, the, the first slide, it's been going for about 18 years now. Um, Revit was designed more to work ac across a, a local area network. So it'll be a, a, a single office, working in a single location, working within their firewall. You break uh, the model down into work sets and it, all the users would uh, sync to that localized central model. Um, this meant limited collaboration, uh, but a daily bin management with the splash screens, um, and there was no internal activity tracking. Uh, we then brought out Revit Server, and this enabled um, uh, enterprises with multiple offices and multiple disciplines to work on a model across a wide area network. Um, the issue again though was you had to be working within your firewall, um, and in some cases you had to uh, set up accelerators. Um, again, it was only single firms. Um, the IT guys had to invest in some expensive hardware and um, sometimes if you had that slow data exchange, you might need a, an accelerator like Riverbed. So what we've done with the collaboration for Revit is we've, we've gone beyond these, these first two uh, team and enterprise uh, setups where we can set up a project across multiple companies. We don't have to worry about firewalls anymore because we, we're using the A360 team cloud. Um, you can do this from multiple locations anywhere in the world and we've got managed access. So this all moves to Autodesk A360 collaboration for Revit. Um, one of the, uh, well, a few of the key things here. Um, so there's the authors who work within the Revit environment. Um, so I'll be showing with us, I'll be trying to attempt another bit of a live demo um, and hopefully won't have too much lag um, on how you can uh, push your models to the cloud where you see these little river icons. These are the different teams actually engaging with the model and doing authoring. Uh, but there may be other non Revit user project members over here on the right. And this is where you can push the model from Revit collaboration to A360 team. Uh, and I'll be showing that uh, in the demo. So um, it's multi-firm concurrent authoring. There's very little IT setup required, which I'm so, sure the IT um, managers will be happy about. Um, integrated communication, we've got a, a thing called Communicator now in Revit Collaboration, and um, it's gonna be able to push that BIM data directly to other cloud services in the future. So um, all these different firms can all push data to the cloud. You don't have to be um, all within the un one, one uh, firm. Um, just to explain things on the bandwidth front, um, the only uh, main sort of time that there'll, there'll be a bit of uh, upload sort of lag is when you push that model to the cloud for the first time. And what you need to do here um, is you need to take the master models um, upload them, so the structural engineer will upload his, mechanical, etc. Um, what it will do when it uploads, it will um, remove the links from the model and you'll link them together on the cloud. Once this is all set up, um, when you're working on those models and you need to do the sync to central to the A360 cloud model, it does just the delta changes. So if you move a window from point A to point B, it's not gonna push the whole model up. It's just gonna push up those changes to that particular area you're working on. It has an inbuilt um, accelerator, so um, this is part of the actual um, install. So what you'll see here um, running in the background is an accelerator running in Revit with the um, uh, Revit collaboration tool. You don't have to get any third-party uh, third party tools. And um, when you do those those changes, it's just gonna push that, that that Delta cache to the cloud, but you'll be working on your local cache version of the model um, within your network. So um, key values here is it's, you're not having to worry about firewalls anymore, uh, anymore. you know, going outside your firewalls, um, having to, to set up other types of configurations. It's multi-firm concurrent authoring um, and the IT setup, it doesn't exist. And I'll, I'll show you how simple it is to do this in a second. Uh, we also have a communicator tool. So uh, here at Autodesk, we use uh, Link on a, on a regular basis to communicate with other team members around the world or in different offices. Uh, this, this communicator tool will come with 
collaboration for Revit. So you can do things like screen grabs, um, direct chat with other users, and there's also a, a team chat as well. Um, there's other tools as well for um, being able to sync uh, activity. There's going to be um, more interaction or interoperability with other cloud services. So for, for a number of you, you may be using um, the drive for the viewing platform or energy analysis or glue or rendering. Um, the A360 collaboration models in the future will start to have direct access to other cloud services. So you don't have to re-upload the information. You can say, oh, I'm working on the cloud, I'm syncing it, I've done this. Now I'm going to push it to the energy analysis or lighting analysis software. Okay, so um, I'm just going to dive into just the setup here, just to sort of attempt uh, attempt a bit of a, a live demo, just to explain um, what you're going to see when you when your models here. So on on the screen here, uh, what I have is the uh, demo data set that I've worked up with a bit more um, structural engineering and some mechanical stuff here, um, dabbling in some MEP. Um, this is actually currently uh, running on the cloud. Um, what uh, I'm not going to do this for now because it'll just take a couple of seconds. Um, what I've got here is um, in the Collaborate tab with the Collaboration for Revit tool installed is the model setting up um, with some basic work sets and within the um, manage links here is the files that are linking through from the cloud. So um, when you first push the data to the cloud, it will um, detach the local work sets and um, push up the model and then you'll relink the path here on uh, on the A360 cloud application. So uh, just to give you a quick uh, demo of how to do this before I go back to the demo data set. So if I just go and do a new, a new project and I'll just use a, an architectural template and I'll draw a, a wall and uh, what I'm going to do is go to my Collaborate tab here, and this is what you're going to see for the first time. So you're going to click on the uh, Collaboration tool, and it's going to ask you to save the model. So um, I'll just save it here. And it's going to create, it's going to do a couple of things here. So first of all, it's going to say, do you want to collaborate within your network or start using Collaboration for Revit? So Collaborate using A360. And you can go OK, and this will bring up a, a dialog. Um, I am logged in at the moment. So um, I don't need to log in again. So it's going to take me to my A360 team enablement here. And uh, I've saved it as demo model. And it's going to say, which uh, project do you want to push it to? So you could have several projects uh, within your hub that you've got access to, and you can push it to one of these. So I'm just going to do it to the admin project and go initiate. And by default, um, what it's going to do is it's going to um, uh, create some work sets. So if you don't have work sets in there, it'll just do these default ones. If you do have work sets, this will still be maintained. You'll still still have this to, to use. And then it's going to upload this this model and it's going to save a local model uh, to my cache. So if I just go back to um, my A360 uh, team environment, what we've got here is the models I've been pushing up earlier. And when I uh, come to refresh this, we're not going to by default, we shouldn't see this wall. I think, uh, sorry, the first push, it will show the wall sitting um, within this. It's going to take a few seconds. Um, so once this sort of finishes, um, I'll, I'll come back to it in a second, but once 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 it finishes, it's going to um, enable me to, to make changes and then do my uh, sync to centrals. I'll just default back to the PowerPoint for now. Um, a number of common questions that we get uh, a lot is security. Um, people are always worried about data security. Um, we do use the Amazon web servers, the EC2 data centers. Um, they're pretty safe. They're 128 bit encrypted. Um, a lot of big companies in the US are using this um, to do collaboration on at present. So um, they trust um, the data security of using this application. Um, we have the Autodesk Trust Center here. You can go to the site, there's a lot of um, updates and information where you can find a lot of information on um, how we actually ensure that the data is safe. So that's uh, auditors.com forward slash trust. Um, other questions we get, uh, things like, you know, we don't work with consultants that are using Revit at the moment, or um, we only have one office. So 
uh, perhaps you may not be doing full collaboration with other firms, but maybe you want to use it for the flexibility to work from home, uh, work from a coffee shop or a job site. So you could uh, be working on the model, sync to central, then you'll go home, you'll log in, and you'll be able to access that latest data from the cloud. So that could be one reason just to um, be using this tool, or you could be out on sites, um, usually when I go and see clients, I've always got my mobile devices with me, and instead of having to fire up my, my computer or have a laptop with me, I can open up the Revit models on my mobile device and start interrogating and demoing the model that way. So it's a really powerful application to have all your data available from anywhere at any time. Um, there's also a concern that the consultants could um, edit our models. So what, what, what's going to happen is when um, anybody access the data, there will be that activity feed. Uh, so if I just go back to, to the site here, there's going to be an activity feed showing when people have accessed the data, what they've done. So you can see here I've been just uh, uploading some models this morning. Um, you can see when people have synced it. Um, and you can also roll back to any uh, previous syncs that could have happened. Um, there are other storage devices, uh, so Dropbox for example, um, but what if you want to actually look at the models? So uh, as mentioned before, collaboration or A360 team is going to be reading a hundred different file formats, it's going to be working on mobile devices. So this is the, the, the strength of this application is it's not just a fantastic storage device, a cloud storage device, you can actually open and read the information either on your web browser or on a mobile device and a, a client can open that model on an iPad, do markups, provide feedback and give you instant information as opposed to having to send it to a Dropbox, download, print out. Um, this is a, a one-stop shop for um, real-time collaboration. Uh, also, um, if a lot of the communications are tied directly to the product, um, sorry, if if uh, your team's communications are tied to the product, you're going to be actually notified of all these updates. So uh, just going back to the communicator tool here, just see that's finished. Okay, it's finished. So, so what, what we've got here, um, once we've actually fired up this, this wall and it's gone to the cloud, um, there's a few tools here. Um, there's views for A360, so you can actually choose um, the different types of views you want to publish, whether it's uh, sheets or floor plans. Um, there's also the management of the models. So for this one here, uh, I'm just going to try and uh, just go back and do a refresh. The um, model hasn't appeared yet. So uh, maybe we're not ready to share it on, um, on the cloud with uh, an external party. Maybe, maybe we're not ready to show it to the client. We just want to keep it within the authors for the time being. So that's why it's not showing up on A360 team at the moment. Um, if I go to actually managing my A360 models here, um, I'll go to my admin project, and you can see these are the ones that have been pushed to the cloud. So um, you can see MEP and architecture and structure. I haven't pushed that across yet because I was making some changes on it. Um, the demo one uh, has yet to be uh, pushed across. So let's just see. Oh, maybe that one, okay. All right, that was back to front. Okay, so what we want to do before we actually uh, publish that data uh, if we've made a change, we can then publish it to A360. So I can go and click on that, and this will just give me the little dialogue, and it will tell me why to publish it to A360, etc. And then I can publish it, and then say the non-Revit user can actually see the latest version. So um, I just got that back to front. Um, so the first version does go to the cloud, and it's just taking a little bit of time to refresh. Um, when you do make the changes, um, it will go to the Revit authors, but um, if you don't want to push it to A360 team, you can uh, hold off until you've got that version uh, fine-tuned and ready to go. Um, we've also got the communicator tool here. So um, if I just fire up that communicator, is it going to be firing up for me? What has it gone off screen? I think it's there. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I thought it had gone off into a second, second screen for a second. I usually work on two screens. So, Okay, so Communicator is a really simple tool. Um, we've got um, access to, to my projects. Um, at the moment, I haven't set this up fully, but these are some of the ones that we, we've done in the past. Um, so, for example, an A360 demo, um, some of the people I've been collaborating with. Um, so that's uh, John and, and Johnny there. Um, there's tools here to uh, look at your frequent contacts, um, the messenger chat window, 
So you can see here I've been having chats with Tom and some of the other guys. And then there's a, a timeline, and this is when you can start to see um, when people are working um, on the project. So again, like in the feed that we have in the uh, the window here, there's, there's one directly within the, the communicator. Okay, um, storage. So by default, um, each user like we don't we don't do this as um, a sale like you buy one copy and then ten users use it. Um, the idea is to have um, one user with a copy and it's ten gigabytes uh, per person. Um, the questions we get is you know is ten gigs enough? Um, but you'll be just using it uh, for your A through sixty team active projects and then. Um, as completed projects fall off, they'll be de deactivated. You still get access though to your 25 gigabytes of storage on the A360 drive, and those are kind of linked. Um, so if we go back to just an A360 um, drive, uh, so A360 drive, you may have seen this uh, recently when you log into your A360 drive. Um, there is a link between the two applications. So let me just uh, do my auto sign in here. And we're still not getting any lag, which is great. So this is the one that you'd have access to now. Um, it's telling you about the new A360 drive. These are kind of going to merge together. Um, you could have a look at uh, trying this out. What I can do here though, is I've actually got interaction with my A360 team uh, applications here. So there's all this sort of uh, new tools that are coming through an A360 drive to potentially merge with A360 team. So if I go to um, click on this hub, um, I can go directly out of drive and into um, A360 team. Okay, um, so the, the 25 gigs that you have, it's not going to be affected. Um, the key difference is that the 10 gigabytes on A360 team becomes a pooled storage, so um, it adds up the project team. So the, the key thing is like you, you buy this per user, not not as a as a big group. You're trying to use 10 gigabytes. Um, so if you've got you know 20 people in your firm, you're going to have a lot more space um, to access. So uh, moving into resources, and then we're going to get into the Q and A. So into the last 10 minutes. Um, if you haven't been to the Autodesk Knowledge Network in a while, this is a really good resource um, for getting started with any of our products. Um, there's tutorials, there's YouTube videos, and then there's troubleshooting here. So this is um, information on getting started with A360 for a collaboration for Revit on subscription. Um, so some issues, some solutions provided. Um, we also have like a, a wiki help page here. So you can see here a lot of the stuff that I've been presenting today um, has similar graphics that you can read through. And um, other great resources out there, um, uh, our Autodesk University website. So we had some presentations on this at AU 2014 last year. This year again, even if you're not going to go to Autodesk University 2015, all of the presentations are published online. A lot of the presentations are recorded, so you can actually watch them online. Um, you don't have to watch them live. Um, a lot of them will be uh, launched on YouTube overview videos. Um, on the web, there's a lot of information um, already on the on the side, of the, like the general details on how to get started, and then there's a link to the Autodesk Knowledge Network. Um, keep in touch with your partners on the release date for this. Um, they're going to be uh, getting geared up for um, releasing this product, um, we will be providing trials um, and there will be um, local support and training and mentoring. And then of course um, in the actual product you're going to have um, uh, information on um, embedded help links and uh, in the future um, there's going to be a lot more happening in this space. Um, as I mentioned before we've got some stuff online about Project Alexandria now. Um, there's more tools that are going to be coming out um, as this product uh, matures, more additional features and capabilities of the collaboration for Revit starting to interact with other cloud services.